So I wanted to redo the boff that I had done in Chicago uh, that was on Page Manager. And uh, so I'm just going to take a little bit of time here and kind of run through my slides, try to uh, describe these as well as I can. And in a separate screencast, I'm going to go ahead and uh, show the examples that I did. So we're going to talk about Page Manager. Uh, I uh, labeled this as an introduction to, deci to deciphering the most misunderstood module in the Drupal ecosystem because so few people actually understand the system. So most importantly, what is Page Manager? Well, Page Manager is a plugin driven user interface to hook menu and hook menu alter. Now, if you haven't used hook menu or hook menu alter, uh, most of the rest of the screencast is probably going to pass you by, but uh, the the demos are definitely worth watching, at least to see the sort of stuff we can do. I would heavily, heavily suggest that you go play with a little bit of development in the hook menu stack uh, just to learn what's there. Um, specifically, Page Manager also has a context stack. Uh, this is very similar to the discussion that's being had concerning Drupal 8 and uh, the whole Butler initiative. We have an access control stack in there as well, which I will demo for you. Um, essentially, it gives us the ability to check multiple different potential access uh, statements instead of relying on a, a single one. And then what I call content freedom through better organization. And again, I'll kind of show some of how that works. So, I mentioned that it was plugin driven. Uh, there are actually a handful of different plugins that do virtually all of the work for Page Manager. The rest of it is uh, either glue code or some supporting code for the plugins themselves. So the first is the task. And the task is literally the path that uh, something's going to be at. So the most common use case for this is uh, probably either creating your own path, which is an example of a custom task, um, or overriding the node path, which is an example of a system task. Um, so uh, sticking with nodes for a second, uh, task plugins, uh, essentially they define how to override a given path. Uh, if you've used views, chances are you've used the uh, page display uh, mechanism, and that lets you display a view on any page that you like. And this can become kind of problematic, because if you don't actually know how to handle uh, what's going to exist on that page before you override it and pass it to your view in some way, then uh, it can lead to some situations where things appear to be buggy even though they aren't. So uh, a task handler was, imp or not task handler, but task plugin was implemented for uh, page manager to help prevent some of this. Now this is kind of a two-edged sword because forcing people to actually define how to override a given path uh, leads to people thinking, well, hey, views can do this without this stuff. Why do I need this here? And mostly this is here to make our life uh, easier in the long run. Yeah, there's a little bit more setup on the, on the front, but we can do things like specify a fallback so that if there is no override for a given path, um, we still get to see, say, the node that would normally appear on it in the way that core would typically render it. Or if we're looking at, um, you know, taxonomy terms in a particular vocabulary, we'd still see that page the way it was intended to render if it weren't being overridden. Um, then we have task handlers. Task handlers are kind of a confusing point for most people. Uh, I, I like to say that this is the page callback mechanism within hook menu. Um, that's not absolutely true, but for the sake of argument, we're going to kind of go with it for the moment. Uh, the one that most people have used, if they've used any at all, is a task handler called Panels. Um, now, Panels doesn't require Page Manager, and Page Manager doesn't require Panels, but when the two get together, they can do some really cool things. Uh, we can talk about some other task handlers as well in my other example. Then we're into the context stack that we talked about. Now there are actually three different ways to acquire context. Uh, the first is arbitrary. Uh, the second is through the URL. And the third is via predefined relationships. And we'll talk more about that here in a few minutes. 
Uh, we also have access plugins, and these can be concatenated together in order to build the access stack that I was talking about earlier. And again, we will demo these things. It's just important to know that it's granular like this. Finally, we have a plugin called the content type. And the content type, uh, really what it does is it is going to uh, either spit out some content of its own or it will consume a context and then uh, return some sort of content based upon that context. So if a content type were to consume a node context, then it could uh, feasibly return anything in that node that it knows how to handle. So, for example, you might have a content type that all it does is spit back node titles. And in fact, such a thing exists. So, back to the uh, hook menu analogy. At the top bullet point, we have a typical uh, hook menu call, where we define the actual uh, path, uh, which I have said is my path percent object, an access callback, a page callback, and then uh, the type of menu item we want this to be. And on the second bullet point, uh, what I've done is I've tried to break this down into the various plugins that are used within Page Manager. So you can see within our path area, I have task and argument. Technically, the task takes care of all of that section, but if an argument were to be a be passed there, the task could actually create a context from that. Um, our access callback is replaced by Page Manager's access stack. Um, the page callback is replaced by a task handler. And then the menu type, um, Page Manager actually has the ability to, to set the menu settings as well. So let's talk about the context stack for a moment. This is kind of a uh, obtuse idea if you haven't worked with it before, but simply put, when we deal with nodes or users or, or any sort of object really in Drupal, um, they usually exist just within their own kind of spaces. And uh, so the, the node object itself might not be all that easily addressable, or the user object itself might not be all that easily addressable if you need to get both at the same time. If you're looking for the current user, you have to global the user, and you know if you want the current node, those things might not be readily accessible to one another or in the same area. But within Page Manager, we essentially load up all of these things and drop them into an array so that we can grab whichever ones we want. So you could load up as many nodes as you needed for a given context stack and drop them all in one place, or as many users as you needed. So if you needed the global user and the user who's the author of the node that you're currently looking at, you could actually have all of that stuff simultaneously and make use of it. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there are three different ways to actually get context. Um, the uh, first is arguments, um, and this is actually really common because when we start dealing with uh, nodes, which is one of the first things that people like to do, um, they end up getting the node context through an argument. Uh, so that means it's coming across the URL. We can also get contexts arbitrarily. You could say, I want node 10. I want user 35, you know, those sorts of things. And then predefined relationships. I made mention of being able to load the user who's the author of the node that you're on into the context stack, and so that would be a predefined relationship. Um, specifically, uh, we're providing a lot of these already through uh, various schema elements in Drupal 7. Uh, so if you put a file field on a node, uh, there'll be a relationship from that node to the file because the schema says there is one, uh, which is actually a really nice benefit uh, in Drupal 7. The access control stack. Um, access plugins, just like content type plugins, can actually consume contextual information. Um, and so if you need to, you know, you could look at something in the arguments that you were passed and, uh, and make sure that they follow whatever rules you want. So if you want to respect node access um, for some path that's not necessarily the node itself, maybe you're at node, percent node, something else, you know, 
you could actually pass the node argument to a node access um, plugin and it would return true or false accordingly so that users wouldn't be able to get to those pages if they don't have access to get to the node they correspond to. We can mix and match access controls so if we need um, multiple types of access you know we want to make sure that the the user has node access to it and that the user is a member of a particular role we could do those things. We have the potential to do and uh, or so you know either the user has access to this node or the user is a member of role X and then potentially we have the ability to do and and or simultaneously so there's this whole idea in C tools of being able to build uh, reusable access control stacks and then we can address those uh, individually later. So a grouping could be anded together and then you could have three groupings within Page Manager that are ORed together. Um, and like I said, there's there's some really good potential there. Then finally, uh, content freedom. Um, now I, I put it this way because within typical Drupal, um, if you want to change the placement of content or where it renders or how it renders in a particular situation, um, you oftentimes end up having to resort to the template files and doing something there. And uh, what we're really looking at here is content type plugins. Uh, since they can consume contexts and they're generally very, very granular, um, you know, oftentimes we're taking one field and putting it in this region and another field and putting it in that region and those sorts of things. And we can mash up all the various contexts that we have available to us and uh, and make them make them available on the page visually in ways that would be impractical when working inside of a template. Um, <clears throat> we can limit the availability of the content type plugins that a user can use by the contexts that are loaded. So there's no reason to give them the ability to add a node title to the page if they don't have a node context loaded in some way. Um, it's relatively easy to create new plugins which can lead to uh, users kind of creating a reusable library of plugins that they have or even contributing those things back to the community. Um, so, you know, all of these things together uh, make it a really, really nice tool set. And then if we want to talk about the workflow for just a second, uh, you know, as I've made mention uh, in step one here, uh, our various plugins handle these portions for us, but we define the path, we define um, a machine name, <coughs> and a an, an initial task handler. Uh, so we could be saying we want to create a panel at the path test, and we could give it just a machine name of test. And then um, I've, I've mentioned page context here. Uh, typically, this is just going to be arguments that we might pull from our path, so if we're not pulling any, then there won't be any. Um, but the access stack from there can can either use context or not, depending upon whether we have it. Uh, so we'll, we'll always have a global uh, user, you know, who is the current user in that access stack, so we can check whether they're a, a, um, a member of a particular role or whether they have a particular permission, things like that. Um, then we move into the variants and task handlers, and this is the section where I said that I wanted you to think of task handlers as being like page callbacks, but that that's not explicitly true. And the reason that that's not explicitly true is because we can have as many different variants as we need for a given path. And the selection criteria, which work exactly the same way as the access stack, um, actually determine which variant you're going to get. Um, and variants can use different task handlers, so you may use panels in one task, uh, or in one variant, and you may use uh, context admin or something like that in a different variant, all on the same path. So depending upon the, the uh, selection criteria rules that come back at you, um, you can fundamentally change the, uh, the user's interface. A great example of this might be, you know, on the home page for your website for anonymous users, you may want them to get all of the general information for 
you know, your site. But for an admin user, you know, as soon as they log in on the front page, you may want to be giving them statistics about what's been happening on the site or give them the ability to actually edit what's going on on the site. Anyways, once all these selection criteria are run, um, we end up with output of some sort. And this is the basic flow of Page Manager. Um, I hope that this has been uh, informative and helpful. I'll go ahead and uh, demo some things in another screencast. And uh, yeah, thank you very much.